Let's get right to our top story tonight. The latest update from the county just hours ago shows a spike in local cases of coronavirus. But as we've seen during the first full day under stay at home orders, many people aren't heeding the government's warnings. News 8's Monique Grego joins us live from La Jolla, where she is also working from home tonight. Monique, what's the latest? Well, Breaking news tonight, the coronavirus forcing millions more Americans into virtual lockdown. Over 75 million people in New York, California, Illinois, and Connecticut ordered to stay at home. In local coronavirus cases. Good evening and thanks for the joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. The county now stands at 16 as health officials announced the death of a 98-year-old woman. Are doing our part part inside the ICU in Italy, the country's deadliest day. Fear on the front lines. ER doctors saying we are on the verge of a medical disaster. Healthcare workers' lives at risk. like a, a rough sketch of what this uh, middle part is going to look uh -huh. like. So if you look, these angels are going to be moving each other. Um, uh -huh. And then I'm just going to figure out how to like, how to fill in the, uh, the e extra space. Um, like so the this, background space? Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of like a, a sketch, like color wise for mm -hmm. what this one is going to be. I'm going to add some flesh tones to her, mm -hmm. some pink highlights, finish out the wings. Um, I'm going to leave some, some touches of the wood, um, but it's going to, you, you'll see. Um, uh -huh. and this is my sketch for, for this side. It's going to kind of be going uh -huh. like against this one. I started drawing when I was around seven years old. I watched uh, this anime called, you know, everyone knows, Sailor Moon. Um, and I just remember doing a drawing in my first grade class of Usagi, which is the main character. and. My classmate looked at it and said, what is that? That's so ugly. That looks horrible. Um, and then I never stopped drawing since. Well, I did stop, but uh, all throughout my childhood, I drew comics. I drew a bunch of fan art. I would just like escape in like fantasies through my drawings. And then I took a long break in my 20s. And around age 27, I started to draw again. Comics. I think summer and fall of 2016 transitioning into early 2017, I started uh, buying sketchbooks again and keeping them as diaries and making just very expressive work without any sort of intention other than um, coping or expressing myself. Um, and then I got published by chance uh, by a small publisher and from then I just haven't stopped creating. The inspiration for this mural, uh, it's basically just like anything that I make. I don't really think about it too much unless it's a very specific project or I, I want to tell a specific story. But most of my art's very intuitive and I just want to get something that's inside of me out for other people to experience. Um, and I've been thinking about angels a lot uh, around the beginning to, to middle part of quarantine.
they have their own difficulties, but you know, you can do them in isolation. You don't have to worry about public scrutiny in live time. Um, I just kind of see comments or weird messages and I can, I can control that. Uh, but here, it was a little bit different, you know, this is, uh, this is a neighborhood, this is a community, you know, and when a community sees something like this happening, they're interested, you know, whether it's negative or positive, they have their eye on what you're doing. Um, and a lot of the folks here have not been shy about it. <laughs> so, you know, I, I had to uh, face some criticism, some rude comments, a lot of, you know, honking and yelling and uh, I had to create this as I had people watching me, which was very nerve-wracking, especially because uh, murals, you know, they take a lot of time, a lot of, uh, a lot of editing, a lot of, um, oh, <laughs> there was a lot of that, okay. Uh, it's really nerve-wracking to put my kind of style of art in like a, a border town community, you know, like a predominantly Latinx, Chicanx, Mexican-American, or just Mexican community. Um, but to see like folks tell me like, oh, it's beautiful, or oh, what is the meaning of this? Or, oh, thank you so much. Like in Spanish, it just, I don't know. It just made me feel like I was doing something right. And it was really beautiful. The thing I'm excited about is to do, like after all the colors down, is to actually do like the black and white detail stuff. That's going to be exciting. So the black and white is... Uh... It's like the, it's going on top of like mm -hmm. to add the... And that adds definition and yeah, details. Like uh -huh. story. My first experience was uh, my dad actually had this wall in the house that was going to be torn down. And so that was my first time doing something larger than a 12 by 16 so it was about like maybe 8 by 8 or almost 10 by 10 um, so that was my first time ever doing the girls in larger scales um, and in public it was actually doing a coffee related mural at this cafe called Cafe Virtuoso yeah. in Bayer Logan <laughs> uh, they have a title called The Weight of Memories um, and I've been making them since I was roughly 15 and in larger scale when I was 18. So starting from what the girls actually represent, uh, the weight of memories or the girls, um, they represent sort of the culmination of a vibe of a place. They represent um, my relationship to my surroundings. And so the girls are actually very surrealistic. We see some realistic features but they kind of branch out to more um, organic features and a lot of the tendrils and a lot of the shapes actually are from the sounds that I hear. A lot of it is from the energy that I get from people around, around town or people that I've had conversations with and everyone literally from the street to just you and everyone else has been so warm and very soft and including uh, Chris, who is in charge of redoing all of this uh, the, in the NOLA. So um, I think I wanted to make it more playful. And so my main idea was home. Like, what does it, what do I want to see when I'm going inside a home? How do I feel when I'm home? Knowing that this is turning into many homes for many people. Um, so I kind of wanted to keep it soft. I wanted to keep it more rounded edges. Um, so I brought in the two girls that are sort of a metaphor for entering the mind. So when you go home, it sort of represents like going back internally, having to um, just kind of be inward when you go back home, you get to rest. And when you're coming out, it's almost like coming out of your mind. You're now exposing to new things. So I kind of love, this is probably my favorite part is the archway. Um, because it sort of represents an going in and out of yourself and into the world. Unlike, unlike
like the front. Um, the texture of the wall is really like um, there's a lot of tooth and also it's done with a certain type of uh, like a paint layer so it's kind of chipping but I still wanted to give it a lot of life and I still wanted it to you know to act as if it's going to stay here forever if it can knowing that the wall is actually chipping off but my process for this one was you know, I wanted to be able to utilize the, the color that's been here for quite some time. And funny enough, the colors that I had in my, um, in my car were the same, are very similar color tones from the tiling of the original tile inside of the NOLA in one of the rooms, one of the main rooms on the left side. Um, so that was actually really cool. Like I had the same orange, um, I had a similar yellow and and even the bluish green was really nice to bring back. Um, so this, this side mostly represents the idea of home and also the idea of wandering. So a lot of the times I like to utilize dandelions as a form of um, moving away, like uh, whether it's exploration or just the idea of movement. So it's just, I think I had, I wanted to have this culmination of these different types of people and these are all surrealistic people but they convey different emotions that you have on a, on a day um, and I wanted to merge that with things that represent you know sitting on a bench waiting for a bus or looking up at the poles or wanting to go back home and or wanting to get out of home and so yeah that's kind of that was the point. <laughs> So the interaction with people from San Ysidro was actually the easiest part. Um, that was because everyone was so warm and I think a lot of the different ages from the older generation to the younger ones, I think most of them has, haven't seen this just right out of their doorstep. So I think the similarities between shock and comfort of seeing art is really nice. And so me as an artist who visits San Ysidro once in a blue moon, but have grown up in San Diego, it's it's very welcoming and it's very it it reminds me of why people visit and why people eat here and why people just wanna, you know, congregate here. So um, that was the really easy part. And as far as the process of art and doing it, I think the only hardship was that I am working with an older building on one side and that is the left side of the building and that's more of a textural issue but not necessarily a creative one so yeah so it was really good <laughs> it was really fun A lot of my murals have used a lot of vibrant colors and are representations of pieces of my culture. Um, so I do Chucho, who's a piñata, and La Muñeca Maria to represent Mexico. And I did the feathered serpent here, Quetzalcoatl, who I, I really wanted to create like a vibrant, beautiful version of him for San Isidro. Chucho is a piñata. He's a character that I always paint, and he represents the struggles in life. I feel, if you look back at the origin of piñatas, they actually came originally from China, and they were used to put 
over the garden and they would break them and spread the seeds for things to grow. And so I really resonated with the idea of that, that through brokenness comes growth. A lot of my bad experiences actually got me to a place where I'm at today. And so that's why I continue to paint him as symbolism for that. I was always an artist, a painter, since I was a little girl, and I wanted to go big. I've always had this fascination with having my art like big and to give it back to the community. And so I just started to spray paint on wood panels and get the hang of it. And eventually it led to, to this. What are the difficulties of making a big scale artwork on the street? On the street, it's very unpredictable, the type of environment you're going to be working in. There's going to be people coming in. People might vandalize. On, when you create art on the street, nothing's ever permanent. It's a temporary thing. But the reason why I love to create murals on the street is because I feel like I can really share my art with the community. So I'm originally from Chula Vista, so San Isidro has always been pretty close. And it's always nice to paint in areas that I'm familiar with. I grew up coming down here all the time and I just, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a piece here finally. What other places have you uh, painted murals on? I painted a lot of murals in LA, in Chula Vista, I painted in Puerto Rico, Miami, I painted in Texas, um, I've painted in Australia and the list goes on. <laughs> Un saludito. ¿Cómo va el proceso de esta, de esta pieza? Ya casi terminando, dando los últimos toques. ¿Cuál ha sido, lo, qué ha sido lo diferente de hacerla dentro de una galería o, o cuando las cosas afuera en la calle? Es la comodidad y la privacidad. Porque pues, cuando hace una pieza en la calle, pues has expuesto a otras cosas que también está muy bien, pues uno aprende así y a terminar las cosas más rápido porque pues las circunstancias cambian. Ya como artista urbano lo podré decir, pues ya tengo alrededor de unos 13 años pintando, interviniendo paredes. Anteriormente pues tenía otro tipo de, otro tipo de, de retórica y utilizaba otros elementos, eran proyectos pues para instituciones privadas y pues nos pedían alguna temática y pues participé en varios en Tijuana, en otras ciudades de, de México, Nayarit, Oaxaca, Guadalajara y pues aquí en Estados Unidos pues ya traté de, de mezclar todo ese aprendizaje que había tenido y aplicarlo hacia un estilo. ¿Cómo empezaste con el arte urbano? Pues en el graffiti. Sí, totalmente. Pues antes, cuando, cuando tenía como unos 13 años, pues iba en la secundaria y pues veía que los tags y todo eso. Y me llamaba la atención, lo hacía, pero yo tenía una, un, una meta más allá, pues si no, quería dominar no solo los tags, sino dobles, characters. Y ya después me fui interesando en lecturas, pues leyendo libros de artistas de renombre y pues ya algunos 
pues ya uno toma referentes de lo que ha sido la historia del arte y eso me inspiró ya después a entrar a la Escuela de Artes en Tijuana, en la UABC, y pues ahí fue donde ya aprendí sobre tendencias. Uh -huh. Tuve algunos maestros que me ayudaron bastante. ¿Cuál es um, la diferencia entre hacer grafite aquí en Estados Unidos, en San Diego, y la universidad en Tijuana? ¿Cuál ha sido? Mm, pues de hecho, de hecho sí, sí es una gran diferencia porque en Tijuana es muy fácil que hasta, hasta el graf, más fácil hasta el graffiti, ¿no? Hacer un mural, pues es muy fácil en México, puedes ir a cualquier lugar, a alguna pared que esté vandalizada o, o no sé, quieres reconstruir un espacio y pues puedes ofrecer hacer un mural y te dan permiso para que tenga una mejor vista pues la calle o, o la ciudad, ¿no? O algún proyecto. Y aquí pues en Estados Unidos es un poco más conservador, pues no es muy fácil conseguir un muro que te den las oportunidades para expresarte tan libremente porque pues hay reglas en, en, pues de la ciudad y todo eso, ¿no? entonces es lo que se tiene que seguir y pues el graffiti pues no se diga, es mucho más difícil porque pues aquí si, si caes una vez pues ya vas a la cárcel, entonces allá en México pues ahí te puedes zafar, ¿no? ya, ya saben de lo que hablo. Mis influencias principales son el, el graffiti, el arte urbano y el cubismo, esos son influencias que, que me han llevado a desarrollar esta producción. Pues ya tengo un tiempo trabajando en este estilo, en, al cual le llamo un, un, un paisaje colectivo del imaginario, en el cual pues se pueden ver elementos que, que están como en un mix, ¿no? que es lo que a final de cuentas somos todos, un mix en la sociedad, entonces de eso, eso es como mi concepto y, y mis inspiraciones. Hi, my name is Jorge Mendoza. Uh, I'm an artist uh, currently living here in San Diego at the moment. I started making murals by doing uh, hand painted signs. Uh, in, in different parts in Mexico, San Francisco, uh, LA, but mostly Mexico, doing signs, and then from there growing, you know, to bigger, to bigger walls. I've been doing murals for about five years, maybe, but more I've been doing my own artwork for around 10 years, maybe a little more. Um, I do photography. I also do some some uh, textile work. So this mural, uh, I was supposed to work with, with some students from uh, a recent survive. They weren't able to make it because of the COVID situation, but it was, the mural was, is meant to be, you know, like a, going through these times right now, making it, making it like a, a happy, like a happy uh, environment and also growth you know, and, and hope for the rest of the year or the year to come. Nest Murals was a studio, it used to be the Nest. It was a studio where I, I did a lot of work, a lot of personal work and also had people come to the studio and, and just kind of like have a creative space freely. Uh, and then that place closed down. So then I just kept the Nest part, then just turned it into murals. So then the studio became the streets. I think finding, hold on, finding the wall sometimes, uh, sometimes finding the funding, you know, to be able to keep, to keep uh, moving that process forward and, uh, you know, to just keep going. Just keep pushing forward and, you know, just maintaining, uh, maintaining that, that art through the tough through the tough times and you know just keep creating and, and staying busy and opportunities will open up for sure. Thank you.